want to get drunk off my ass, and it's got to be on cheap wine. In all the videos I made about the carnal sins, there is always one question that arises in the comments, and so I'm making this one to address it. It all boils down to Nathaniel's identity and whether or not he truly is a higher vampire as he claims to be. And by extension, whether or not other beings such as the Alps or the Bruxas or Bruxay or Bruxai, whatever, um, whether or not these two are higher vampires. So let's get over whatever evidence and information we have and see what's what, shall we? So be it. I'll take you to Lady Vega, bud. Just no trickery, understand? I'll start from Nathaniel's encounter, since that's where the discussion usually begins. As I mentioned, he calls himself a higher vampire. What are you? A vampire? Higher, of course. And indeed, true to the game's bestiary, he fits the description. He has an incredibly human-like appearance, he is very intelligent, you know, being a doctor, teaching medicine at the university and whatnot, um, and he's virtually undetectable for witchers, seeing as how easily Geralt can actually fail the quest altogether. So with all that, why do people still think that he's not actually a higher vampire? Well, during the fight with Geralt, he turns into a catacan. Those are generally more common and weaker enemies, and whenever we face them, they never turn into humans or anything like that. You know, we meet one with Triss in the sewers, and Geralt basically makes light of the encounter. It's a catacan. A what? A vampire. Watch out for its venom. The sewer is always this exciting? Mm-hmm. Luckily. Luckily? Steady source of income. Come on, let's go. Certainly nothing like the bestiary suggests witchers should do, um, when fighting them. What's even worse is that the entry even says that thirst for blood is the only thing in common between higher vampires and their distant and much more primitive cousins Echimaras, Alps, Catacans and so on. Basically, Flarout says that Catacans are not higher vampires. Additionally, the entry on Catacans does not mention anything about them being higher vampires, being human-like, intelligent or difficult to detect. So then you might say it's settled and he simply lied to us. Well, probably not. Here's something interesting. A viewer of mine sent me an email containing his correspondence with a friend of his who allegedly works for CD Projekt Red and moderates, actually administers, their Witcher forums. It seems my viewer picked on some of the discussions from those videos I mentioned and he asked his friend about it. By the way, if any of them are watching this video, thank you very much guys, I really appreciate what you've done. Right, so the forum administrator claims that Hubert is indeed a higher vampire, and his response contains two important pieces of information. The first one is that him turning into a catacan is a little misleading CD Projekt Red simply didn't think it was wise to dedicate the time and resources to craft a unique model for him, such as the ones that Rages and Detlap have, for example, in Blood and Wine, and honestly that may actually be the case. He only ever appears in the Carnal Sins, which is a skippable side quest, and even if you do it, there's still a chance you won't figure it out, that he is the killer, that is, and in that scenario, you will never have to fight him. So, due to the fact that Hubert is indeed a far less significant character than Rages and Detlaf, I would understand why the developers might have decided to just use a Catacan model for his vampire form. Now, of course, this piece of information is not an absolute fact, and the person who shared it never claimed so either, but I think it makes a decent degree of sense. So, that was the first interesting thing in the response. The second one is that when he talks about Hubert transforming into a catacan, he says that catacans are, and I quote, described as an inferior variety of higher vampires. When I read that for the first time, I thought it was absolutely wrong. Um, if you remember the codex entry I showed you earlier, it basically says the exact opposite. It says that higher vampires and catacans are distant cousins 
and have nothing else in common save for the thirst for blood. After my initial reaction, I thought some more about it and suddenly it hit me. I was reminded of the famous maid from Vicovaro. Once was a maid from Vicovaro. Tight at night she'd be loose tomorrow. Early in the morning. Where you think you're... Anyway, do you guys remember how the quest ends after you hunt down that catacan? But what on earth's a catacan? A higher vampire. Particularly interesting case, this one. Yep. Geralt calls him a higher vampire right there. I'm not sure if the administrator dude was referring to this, but nevertheless, it gets really confusing. Going back to the Oxenford drunk quest, um, even though Geralt calls the Catacan a higher vampire, pretty much all else suggests that he doesn't think very highly of him. First off, when he deduces that the murderer is a Catacan, he doesn't seem worried at all. Fondness for jewelry, wounds on the victim's bodies, everything suggests a catacan, except this vampire likes the blood of drunkards. And then also he doesn't seem concerned when it comes to facing him while drunk as hell. Come out and fight, bitch. Definitely nothing like the way he approaches higher vampires in Blood and Wine. However, it must be said that the catacan could indeed speak. I sense your blood. I mean, all he was concerned was blood, as the bestiary says, but it's definitely worth mentioning. So it's a bit of a mess really, um, I think it's fairly safe to say that even the developers weren't absolutely certain about this matter. Personally, after all I've said so far, I think the one story that seems most believable to me is that Hubert is indeed supposed to be a higher vampire, and him turning into a catacan rather than a uniquely looking creature was either an oversight or done on purpose to save development resources. And that actual catacans, those who can't transform into humans and can't be medicine professors and all that, they, in my opinion, aren't higher vampires. Just as the Codex says. And as for this... What on earth's a catacan? A higher vampire. Well, I've no explanation. Alright, now let's have a look at Blood and Wine quickly and talk about the Bruxa variety of vampires. Are they higher or are they not? When I played through the expansion, my opinion was also mixed, to be honest. At first I thought they are indeed higher, since they could assume a completely human-like form and be pretty much undetectable, judging by the first one we meet. I suppose they're also fairly intelligent, since... Leave me alone! Leave me alone! They can have relationships with humans, judging by that note we find later on, on another Bruxa. Or was it an Alp? I think it was a Bruxa. <laughs> anyway, they also seem stronger than Catacans, and for what is worth, they do transform into creatures that somewhat resemble the forms of Death Love and Rages. So, all in all, decent candidates for the title of Higher Vampires. Back blood, should not back a vial. However, once again, a major issue is that the bestiary distinguishes them from Higher Vampires. Well, Alps at least, but I think Brooks's fall into the same category. And their own entries, despite me noticing their intelligence and uh, human likeliness, do not really praise any of that. It's also worth pointing out that they do answer Detlaf's call to attack Beauclair in the end of Blood and Wine, so I suppose that makes him superior to them, in a way. Although that's probably because of his well-developed personal trait, as explained by Regis, Detlaf's trump card is his herd instinct, his tribal propensity. Oh, here's another thing. During our first encounter with Detlaf, he says how the Bruxa we killed was dear to him. I've done you no harm. Yet first you butchered a Bruxa who was dear to me. Now you pursue me. Why? And then immediately afterwards when Rages shows up, he tells us that Detlaf prefers the company of lesser vampires. In point of fact, he prefers the company of lesser vampires and shuns that of humans. 
which probably also suggests that the Bruxa is seen as Detlaf's lesser. So, are they higher vampires? Well, most of the evidence suggests that no, they're not. However, I'm reminded of that description of the Catacan by the forum admin, where he called them an inferior variety of higher vampires, and in my mind, that would be a more accurate description of the Bruxa, and perhaps the Alp as well, rather than the Catacan. And I suppose I can tackle one final question, and that is, what is Oriana? Because that's been brought up quite a few times as well, albeit in other videos of mine. People have usually argued over whether she's a Bruxa or an Alp, and after all we've said, I'm fairly certain that she is actually a higher vampire. If you think about it, she fits the description perfectly, and it doesn't seem like she sees herself as any lesser to Detlaf or Rages. And on top of it all, she's the one who has the key to the Unseen Elder's house. And based on all that, she has to be a higher vampire. However, I think it's possible that because this trailer released before the actual game, and the Blood and Wine expansion where we see Oriana is the last piece of content from The Witcher 3, the developer's opinion about what Oriana should be could have changed. I think it's possible that when they made the trailer, she was supposed to be a Bruxa, but when they made the game, they made her out to be a higher vampire. So I think if anything, this video may have caused more confusion than it cleared things up, but I guess you'll tell me um, what you think about all of this, and yeah, th that's all I had to say. Thank you very much for watching, thank you for your support, and until the next video, stay tuned and be good. So lies anxious by